let's just say someone wants to start creating content or an agency is creating content. What are some of the things that they need to know? You know, as we said, what's that slow down and start thinking about some things that they need to know as they get into this industry? Well, I think the first thing I would say is there is definitely a difference between being a creator and being an influencer. And so if you take nothing away from this but that today, then I would be a happy woman. I am a fan of sets of three. I don't know why. I don't know if it was a math teacher in my childhood or I don't know. I like, I like, I think of things in sets of three. And so at my firm, we sort of have a what I call a triangle framework for thinking about intellectual property for creator-based businesses. And that could be a marketing agency. It could be a professional coaching or consulting firm. It could be a digital learning business. If it involves the packaging and manifestation of knowledge or content in some tangible form, whether it's a marketing campaign or a digital course that you can get on demand, there's sort of a a three-part framework we use. So you've got brand. That's the first point of the triangle. What are you going to yourself and call the things that you are putting out into the world that you're selling? And this is usually associated with trademark implications. So I think one thing that creator-based businesses probably don't do early enough is think about what their brand strategy is and what trademark due diligence they might have to do to make sure that they're not adopting and putting resources behind developing a brand identity, whether it's just a word or words and pictures or a fancy logo, whatever it might be, that then ends up being for some reason unavailable due to trademark issues. So you've got brand, which invokes trademark due diligence, trademark registrations, trademark protection. As the business gets bigger, sometimes trademark licensing, where you allow other parties to use your brand in some sort of business relationship. Then the second point of the triangle is what I call your content. So you've got brand first and content. That is the stuff that you're putting out into the world. Again, whether it's a marketing campaign, whether it's a brand identity for another client, um, whether it's that digital course, whether it's a pitch deck or a presentation or a speech you're giving at a major conference of work that is really you know, at at the heart of what you stand for. That's your content. And usually we're invoking copyright when it comes as a legal concept to protect the content, whether it's copyright registrations, whether it's being certain that we put copyright notices where they need to go on all of our assets, or whether it's just giving people fair warning that this is our original copyrighted material. There's lots of different strategies, right? So we've got brand, we've got content. Then the third point of the triangle really quickly is your transactions. And here is, I think, the trickiest part of IP protection for lots of small businesses, especially creative-based businesses, because they move so fast. So transactions can mean how you license your work out into the world. What are the terms and conditions that support you giving access to, let's say it's a digital course, or let's say it is a manual or a book or whatever it might be. What are the terms and conditions of how that stuff can be used out in the world? Mm. That's transactions out between you and your clients and customers. Transactions in primarily means who participated in creating the work that you're selling. Because unless it was somebody who works for you and gets a W-2 paycheck at the end of the year, then they're not your employee and you probably don't own the rights in the work that they create. And so you need a transaction in the form of an independent contractor agreement, a trade, uh, you know, some sort of assignment, intellectual property assignment, to make sure you actually own all the rights to the intellectual property that make it into your product or your service. So that's the triangle, and that's how we like our clients to think about assessing the opportunities and then also the legal due diligence that goes behind protecting their assets from an intellectual property perspective. <music> 